It's week two, and it's we have bracketology in college. We got bracketology. So what we decided, and I want to explain this to people, is this is just a week run reaction to where what we think the college football playoff would look like right now. Okay, so this is going to change next week. It's going to change the week after that. We want to know if you agree or disagree. Again, hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. We're close to 150K. I know the chat's popping, so y'all please hit that <laughs> like button <laughs> as well. So I'm going to go through these. Georgia, one, winning the SEC. Miami, two, because I don't know how you don't after seeing them in the ACC and the schedule they have. Uh, Ohio State, three. Know the offensive line looks shaky, but we're going to keep Ohio State. I don't think the Big Ten is going to be a four seed, just like I don't think the SEC is going to be a four seed. And then four, Utah out of the Big 12. Five, Notre Dame, got to put them in. Got to put them in, and since they can't get a bye, if they go undefeated, they're definitely getting that five spot. We're going to see six, Alabama, seven, Texas, eight, Penn State, nine, Ole Miss. Uh, We've got 10, Oregon. And again, this is going to change, but this is just going off of week one, and I don't know how you don't put them there. And then 11, Oklahoma State, 12, Memphis. All right, now the first two out that are not group of five, we have Michigan and Tennessee. Then the first two out that are group of five contenders, we've got Liberty and a UNLV team that look really, really good against Houston. Before, David, you you break some of this down, look at these matchups, dog. You would have Penn, you would have Ole Miss and Penn State at Penn State. Which is what I had preseason. Which is what Correct. you had Happy preseason. Valley. You have Oregon going to Texas. Mm. You've got Memphis going to Notre Dame, all right? You've got Oklahoma State going to Bama. That is absolute gasoline in a first round. But anyway, this playoff's going to be sliced. The first round home games are going to be absolutely electric. It's going to bring in a ton of money and get a ton of views, which means we're probably going to go to 14 in the next year. But David, just your overall thoughts. I know this is a collective list between mm-hmm. the three of us. Is there anything that you personally well, would change? Well, uh, a couple thoughts. Uh, Notre Dame obviously got over a big one early here. Yeah. That We had talked about Notre Dame at Texas A&M. If you can get over that, not that they won't have big football games down the stretch, but that's really what you needed to get over, especially to be ranked high early here as the momentum of college football builds up. And then taking on Memphis right here in this as the group of five team, you know, Memphis still has to go play Florida State. And what I was saying to you guys is now you really have to win that game. Right, like th- Memphis has to beat Florida State because before the season it was okay. What if Memphis loses a close Can game they get at Florida in with State? Loss. But 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 they look good in that loss, right? And Florida State ends up being a nine or ten or eleven win team. Can they still get in over an undefeated G five team like we have down there at like Liberty or UNLV? Now because of the way Florida State has started off, Memphis, you really got to go beat them because there's no good looking loss. Well, the well, it, it begs a question, and Blaine, I want to ask you this because David's exactly right. If you're Memphis. Would you rather Florida State be a bad football team, right, and just be able to go in there and beat them and it may not look as good at the end? Or would you rather Florida State be a pretty good football team, better than you, and you have to go in there and pull the upset, but it looks better in the end? I'd rather just be a bad football team so I could beat you. But that's uh, just- The competitor in me says I want them to be a better football team and I want to go beat them. But if you're Memphis, obviously you don't want to be as good as they have been and walk in with a little bit less. A couple of things here when I want to look at this. One, do y'all think Texas is too high uh, Too high at seven? Um, and uh, two, right now, is the biggest worry for Miami in the ACC, Georgia Tech? I, I Miami doesn't play Clemson, right? They don't play Clemson, I don't think. Is it Georgia Tech season. or Louisville? It's I Go through right their here. schedule real quick. Let, let's let's right run here. through it, because I don't want to miss a matchup. You want Miami's schedule, right? Yes, please. Okay. Um, they already beat Florida, and then they have um, uh, Florida A&M, Murder. I believe it is, something like that. Yeah. Um, just the ACC. And, uh, okay, just the ACC. Virginia Tech. Yeah. And that game is, hold on one second, this one's backwards. I got it if you need me to. Dave. Yeah. Okay, let's go. You got Virginia Tech at home. Okay. All right, you go to Cal. Okay. You go to Louisville. There's a bye week before Louisville. Exactly. There's a bye week before Louisville. You go to Louisville, FSU at home, Duke at home. You go on the road at Georgia Tech. You have okay. Wake at home and at Syracuse. So Georgia I mean, Tech it's Louisville and Georgia Tech. Mm. Those are the two. Yeah. I'd put them about the same because I think this Louisville team looked I know they played a, a Austin P team that they drowned in a small puddle of water. Yeah. But uh, I think this Jeff Brom showed me last year, and I think Tyler Shuck's a better quarterback than Jack Plummer. Yeah. And I still think that. And I really think you can have an honest conversation about Penn State winning the Big Ten. You, you after yeah. the way Drew looked in this offense against a legit opponent, not that West Virginia is amazing, right? We saw, I mean, God, more more busts than you know. I'm not going to make that joke. Say it, it just, dude. No, it, it just. 
it was ugly for them to finish. Notre Dame's play. almost a lock now. Almost hey, a lock. Uh, for sure. What did you ask about Texas? You asked about Texas. Y'all feel like they're too high at seven? L- like they should be uh, lower, lower. Like as Yeah, in, they should be lower. Like so they would replace like Bama, I-, I guess, if, if they're the second SEC team in because the first SEC team in is Georgia. The second would be Bama. The third would be Texas. And the fourth and final one would be Ole Miss. Uh, it, I mean, you look at the way the schedule plays out and who knows, right? Georgia's got to play Texas, mm-hmm. right? Georgia also has to play Ole Miss. I don't think Ole Miss plays Texas, correct? So when you look at at Ole Miss's schedule, if they're able to get past Georgia, I I think you could actually make the argument. Now we'll see them in Alabama, right? I believe they play each other. O- Ole okay. Miss plays Bama, unless I'm wrong. And and I want to, they do they not don't. play Bama. They don't. They so do their not SEC play Bama. schedule right now is Kentucky at home, at mm-hmm. South Carolina, at LSU, OU at home, at Arkansas, Georgia at home. At Florida and you in the year, obviously, in the Egg Bowl versus Well, Well, Ole o- Miss, again, I think their schedule is a little bit lighter than Texas is. So I think you can make the argument. And again, I got Ole Miss in the SEC championship. And we game. feel really good about only one team from the ACC coming out in the playoffs this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, Clemson would now. be the second to me. Yeah. Clemson would be the second. I know people want to say, oh, Georgia Tech or this. And and I hope Britain and them keep riding it out. I, I got the over in their season win total. But w- when I-, I look at this Clemson team, as inept as they looked against Georgia on offense, they're not going to run into another Georgia team, d- d- that type of defense, and they don't play Miami during the regular season. So to me, this is going to come down to either the second place team in the ACC, all right, which would probably be Clemson in my opinion. And I know people say, "Oh, that's crazy." Just watch. Or the second place team, I got o- o- we got Oklahoma State, or I do, losing to Utah in the Big Twelve. That's giving them the 11 seed. The us, the others are filled up obviously by the four buys. Yeah. And then the SEC Big Ten plus Notre Dame. That's where Notre Dame beating Texas A and M. If you were going to be a bid stealer, or if you were at the bottom of tier one of one of these power four conferences, especially the SEC and Big Ten, and <laughs> including obviously Texas A and M, you did not want that result on Saturday. Um, what was I about to say? Uh, so you were talking about, uh, you were asking about Texas. Uh, I want to talk about, okay, the ACC. You were talking mm-hmm. about the ACC. Not, uh, I feel even more comfortable now in my pick that only one ACC team gets in. Yeah. I think that'll be the ACC Me champ too. in the first right. four, which I, I had Miami. I feel even better about that now. And I'm still not convinced that a second Big 12 team gets in. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Utah, there's going to be a lot of teams up uh, up for debate. Well, if, David, if, if Oklahoma State, let's, and this is, this is what I had, if, if, they lose. All right, if they finish 11 and 1 regular season, all right, they beat Utah at home, but then they got to play Utah again in the the Big 12. And they lose to like Kansas State and the and road. they lose to Kansas State. Mm-hmm. That that's what I had. And Utah beats them. Are you going to take an 11 and 2 Big 12 team and they only get that second bid or are you going to give it to a Michigan out of the Big 10 or a Tennessee team who, you know, let's say Tennessee goes ten and is two. Is nine and three still death? It's not, yeah. I think nine and I don't three think is death nine and in three that does scenario. It. Uh, it, yeah, I don't think it does either. Really, I think almost any scenario, unless there's just complete carnage across the country. But to answer your question, that's why this game between Michigan and Texas this weekend is so huge. It's massive. And it's not just like oh, who wins and who loses. It's how do you look when you win? How do you lose on this one? I mean, if Texas goes in there and wins by two touchdowns or more, that's going to tell us a lot, right? If, if if Michigan's able to beat Texas, but barely, and Texas is already ranked much higher, and we can break down the AP poll here in a minute, but uh, the AP poll this week, Texas at three. If Michigan wins that game, but barely, Texas isn't going to fall dramatically. They're still going to be in the conversation. And other than Georgia and Oklahoma, you know, they they got a really winnable schedule. And then that's where these, these um, three, Three teams that we were talking about uh, after this week one really come into play. Tennessee looks really strong. They got a good one against NC State. They're gonna, they do. They win that game, and depending how they win that game, they're going to move up in the rankings. USC, USC is not up here just yet. They had a heck of a win, and not they're only right that, there. they look like they could be a playoff team. And keep in mind, we still aren't talking about Missouri, and their schedule is very favorable, and and even Oklahoma looked really good. So that's where I think a couple other teams are going to be able to come. And Iowa. I was another one that could kind of sneak up in there. That's where I don't know. Maybe that second Big Twelve team gets. gets where do we see USC down. right now? Uh, no, yeah, I, um, I have their schedule right here. If I you want to run through it, I mean, I, there has to be a different feel in this room now. I got them at what, ten right now. After what we were talking about preseason, how much yeah. do you trust this USC defense? Because you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna have to go Michigan on the road. You're gonna have to play Penn State at home. You're gonna have to play Notre Dame. Well, well, here's the thing about USC. At least this is what I got from it. When they hired DeAnton Lynn, you know the scheme's going to be good, okay? You you know this guy's going to put together a plan that is tailored to his personnel to put them in the best situation. But the thing that jumped out to me on that USC defense that I haven't seen in a long time from that program 
is they tackled really well in space and they were overtly physical on defense. They wanted the smoke. I haven't seen a Lincoln Riley coach D, or Lincoln Riley team defensively actually want the problems. USC wanted it. We heard LSU talking about it all week. We don't want to go to Caesar's Palace. We want to get into a fist fight. Well, USC wanted the fist fight. They were waiting for you your ass to walk out of the bar so they could hit you in the face. And they really gave you the first lick, honestly. So when I look at this USC team, it's not just the scheme. It's the identity. And to me, identity travels. Now, we got to see how they handle prosperity. All right? I've seen Lincoln Riley over his career struggle on defense. So one game isn't going to totally flip what I think about Lincoln Riley and his ability to maintain that identity. But it is a really, really good start. And I think DeAnton Lynn has those guys hungry. I think he's found that motivation factor. And USC now defensively wants all the smoke. And at the end of the day, I would much rather have a simpler scheme and my guys trying to go out there and knock your freaking head off than have some super complex scheme like I hear Austin Armstrong talking about all at Florida and we can't tackle somebody in a phone booth and get lined up right half the time, which I got a lot of respect for. I think he's a daggum good coach. I think they're a little too complex. They look like they're thinking too much. But right now, I'm going I'm to believe what I see. I think this USC team wants it. I think they want the fight. I think they want to prove people wrong. And if it's got to turn into a bar fight, that gum, they'll break a bottle and they'll be waiting on you. Yeah, and I, and I think one thing we do need to talk about is teams that are not on this list, and I'll take us to the AP poll, really from 12 and up and 15. Yeah. What teams? Because I think Tennessee's an on, honest conversation of making a play. Oh, with, I, I, we'll know more this weekend, but if we're going to talk about teams that, that we feel good about, that we felt good about before the season, that had some question mm-hmm. marks in important positions, Tennessee's right there. You got that AP ready, Dave? Yeah, Utah, Miami, SC, and Tennessee are all outside the top 10. I mean, I, I'll, it's I'll crazy to Miami's the outside the top 10. Yeah, I mean, so Georgia, Buckeyes, Texas 3, Bama 4, then you got Notre Dame, Ole Miss is at 6, Oregon 7, Penn State, uh, Missouri, and then Michigan still rounding out the top 10. Yeah, it's I, I've got a problem with, I, I'm with you, Blaine. I even put this on social media. It's, I get that Florida has struggled, they've lost a lot of games. But I can get a lot more out of watching Miami beat Florida up than I can out of watching Arkansas beat up Arkansas Pine Bluff. And sometimes it's not just how you win, but it's how you look. I was getting texts from from guys that were at the game, that that are in sports media, that are are the coaches, the high school coaches that were at the game. The text I kept getting was, Miami is huge. They are huge. I don't think people realize how big Damian Martinez really is. When they popped on that screen and you looked at the size of those guys, not that Ford is small, but Miami looked to me like a team that was disciplined, that was organized, that was physically ready, right? Which is a thing all in itself. And they, to me, when they were rolling guys in and out, I think this team has enough depth. You got to put them in the, I would put them over Michigan right now. I would put them over Missouri right now. Over Oregon. Uh, I think you can make an argument to put them over Oregon, even though I'm still really high on Oregon. I think you can make an argument that Utah should be ahead of Michigan right now and Missouri. I know it was Southern uh, Utah or whatever it was, uh, but Missouri played Murray State, and I think Utah's a more complete team right now. You know, for our our boy Coach Jacob Peeler at wide receiver, uh, I I know they're going to be cooking on offense. We'll see. But yeah, Miami's kind of my biggest qualm there. Outside of that, I'm not... I don't think anything's crazy there. No, Clemson fell to 25. I think, you know, there's there's a part of this that's like just because they lost so badly, you For had sure. to move them back. I didn't really move them too far. I think they fell one spot in mind just because, one, that defense is legitimate. And, two, we got to understand just how good Georgia is. It's, I mean, Clemson's still going to be a lot of SEC team or ACC teams. They, they are, and I think people that are burying Clemson right now, it's the problem, I, I think, with, with Dabo and this transfer portal thing is that I don't know if they can have elite success again. They're going to have success. Clemson is going to win eight games at least on, on the reg. They'll win nine. Heck, they may even win 10. But they're not going to win a national championship with the way that he's operating right now. And Clemson fans have sippeth from the cup. They have eaten the filet mignon. You showed them the promised land, all right? Now they don't want – now they're not going to settle for just having good years. And that makes it even harder. If Dabo went three and nine – It'd be a lot easier. Hey, man, you know it's this. We we can't have this keep going. Let's sh- thanks for the memories, Fallout Boy style. Yeah, whatever. But they're they're still a good football team for sure. Their defense is for real. I just think Clemson fans 
are watching Georgia turn into what they were years ago. Mm-hmm. And that kind of hits at home. I don't think Arizona should be ranked. Because the defense. I think their defense is bad. You gave up 40 against New Mexico. Look, your quarterback, a dog, your receiver is an absolute dog. But I don't think, if you look at most of these teams on this list, list offense good enough, but their defense you, you can somewhat trust. I don't think you can trust Arizona's defense on this list. What, 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 do, we, what do we think about LSU falling to 18? What, what, what are you guys, what are y'all's thoughts? I'm confused on why LSU fell to 18 and Clemson fell all the way to 25. Mm-hmm. Well, it was, a, it was a tighter game, right? Like, I, I think it's too, dr- no, I'm with you. I, I think Clemson fell, fell way too far. Uh, but I, I don't know. LSU 18 kind of feels right to me because they do have the pieces. It's, a, it's really not that difficult of a fix. Throw the ball down the field. Don't, don't, if you're the quarterback, don't rush to get to the check down and give the ball to Lacey and Mason Taylor and your playmakers. This isn't like a Florida State problem where you're just bad and bad at really important spots. LSU, you should actually be a little bit enthusiastic because your defense actually yeah. looked capable of doing anything. Well, it's just you, you, you took your ball and tried to hide in the second half, and we broke it all down. I don't. Well, apparently, that. Desmond Howard is the defense's fault. Did you apparently. see that? <laughs> like, and listen, uh, Desmond Howard's incredible player. I, I think you know. I, I I just wonder if you watch the game. If you don't, know that's Desmond, one of the top five dumbest takes. Desmond I've Howard heard. said on social media, basically blamed Blake Baker and the LSU defense for the loss. You know what that sounds like to me? And, and I don't want to accuse him. I, I, I've never met Desmond Howard. I've never seen him in action. He may be the hardest working guy of all time. But that really makes me think that you didn't watch the game. You just watched the highlights of the game. Or you just watched like the last drive of the game. I just don't know as somebody who played football at that high of a level like he did and has been around the game so long and, and I know knows the game, could watch that game and say, yeah, man, yeah, that was LSU's defense that mm. cost him. Especially with the track record of LSU's defense the past couple of years. Yeah. I, I just didn't get that, man. Yeah. It didn't make sense. Not a great take. Uh, as far as LSU, I had them preseason ranked 16. So okay. you lose a game, you move them back two spots. Like, that's right on track. Just, I still think the most outrageous about this is Miami at 12. Yeah, I, I, I really think Miami think, I, like, like, like the K- Same like, one about Florida. There'll be people in the chat that say, oh, well, they, well, they, they beat a, a Florida team that won. Oregon beat Idaho 24 to 14. Miami, need, look, Miami went and beat a good Florida team in the swamp. All right, and, in and, the and swamp. I had Miami well, a good a talent. A ta- they have talent talented. on that team. I had Miami ranked higher preseason than the AP poll does. Yeah. Now after, after they win, yeah, I had them ten. <laughs> hey YouTube, what's up? We know you're loving these videos. You get a chance, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's an easy thing. It helps out us. It helps out you. Even if you disagree, which is a good thing, because dissent moves us forward.